Yes. Somebody's getting married. We have an official date. Me and the Blackbuster chick. We have an official date. What the, what the hell is the date again? <laughs> Friday the 13th of March, 2015. Friday the 13th and of March, 2015. Um, by the way, there would not be a Cine Radio that Friday the 13th. Um, and I'm sorry to say, probably not a live stream of the event. No, more likely it'll just be a you're gonna have to wait. To, you're going to have to wait to see the footage on our YouTubes. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm making an epic wedding video. Don't worry about that. Yes. I would say blip videos too, but unfortunately we all been kicked off blip. We're not fucking mainstream. We're not fucking talented. We fucking have no fucking skill, I guess. We're not making blip and many, so they're not fucking keeping us around. Well, except for you, honey, because I know your account's been approved. Yeah, mine was approved. I actually got sent to my spam email for some reason. That's I, I kind of missed it. I was just like, really? <laughs> I haven't done a video in, in how long because my computer's a piece of shit. Yeah, but you're on the agony booth. You're on the agony booth. That means you get views. Mm. There was somebody that I was really disappointed with uh, that had got kicked off, but she did get reinstated. It's um, uh, Yulia from Agony Booth who does full of questions. Oh, she nice. She's been kicked off, and then she appealed when she's back on. Oh, nice. But see now we do in the official fuck you blip TV. Who who do we have on the fucking roster to bring into the call? Uh, I am just trying to do it at the moment. That's right. Uh, we're doing live TV here. How do you do this? If you want to hear people shoot about their experience with blip TV, Stick to, stay tuned to the show, and of course, get on your Twitter, get on your Facebook, get on your social media, tell people where you are. That's hashtags in the radio, large S, large I, here on thezerolevel.com, RBT Entertainment, and of course, Ustream. Ustream. We're, we're just working out our little fucking technical thing. We're working out the technical thing. We're doing the technical thing. We're doing the things that most people don't see in the background. Do it, that would be excellent, but... Oh, no. Oh, hold on. No, that's the wrong one. Ay, 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 hold on. Do, 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 you have a beautiful voice as ever, darling. Just don't go on a microphone other than this one. Please. <laughs> okay. So, the two <sighs> job applications that the radio stations I've been applying for, I can't do? <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> Problem is I've got two different names on here. And I'm trying to figure out how the hell to do <laughs> If it was Skype it would be easier, but Yeah, unfortunately Skype just gives me audio problems. Hmm. It does, it does. Well entertain the people while I'm trying to do this. Entertain the people while we're trying to do this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, you talk about what you what you think about the whole blood fiasco thing. Okay, well, a man walks into a bar. It hurt, yes. Yes, and it hurt. Um, a Jew, a rabbi, and a priest walk into a bar. Um, they both walk up to the bar and say, "Let me get a shot. Let me get a sh let me get a shot of water." The bartender goes, "All three of you." The priest, the rabbi, and the priest, the rabbi, and the uh, I, I can't think. I can't think of it. <laughs> yes, bad jokes here. Bad jokes as we're trying to figure out our our colon segment. We're trying to figure out our colon segment. I've sent an invite to him at the moment. Um, let's just see. Please, if anybody else wants to join in at the moment, just tell me. Yeah, so if, if you 
Susie, drop your drop your contact information into the chat, and if you want to join us, please contact Susie. Or if you're already in contact with us, feel free to contact us. Uh, it's one of those kind of segments. We're doing new technology. We're doing the new technology. We're doing this whole Google Plus thing. Is it an escape? Because escape has bad audio, has bad audio and bad video, and it charges me. And because I work for a certain company that's not my main day nine to five job, a certain company, I have to do budget restraints. I have to have a lot of budget restraints because um, I've not been paid in months and I've been fucked out of a lot of money. Yeah, so uh, we we are having technical problems. We're having the technical problems. We have so many technical we, problems because of a certain freaking company I work for, and I don't just don't have money. I need money, so many money, so much money. Right, right, right. right. Okay, I think we actually have Eric in the chat now. Hey, Eric, can you hear me? I know he's in the call. I just don't know if he's actually can hear me or fucking has any visuals. Uh, love, this is going to be one of those videos that I send you for editing because this is going to take a lot of work. You just better hope I don't get the white screen of death again. <laughs> well, I keep telling you, it's just, look, get an external monitor, it'll fix it. Yeah, I'm trying to get money for a wedding at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, external monitors don't really come easy at the moment unless I steal them. <laughs> uh, let, let me work that out. I can probably steal you one. <laughs> From all the way over there. Uh, here on Center Radio, we do not actually, we don't endorse any kind of fucking um, criminal acts. Everything is purely for comedic purposes. And we have lost the air. Do we have Patrick? Do we have Patrick on our freaking list? Uh, or I I know I have a TWK somewhere. On your Google Plus. Yeah. The joy of better quality. It just makes technology so more such just such so more confusing. Hmm. Mr. Eric, can you hear us? Hello. Talk, dear, talk. <laughs> I'm doing my best. We are. We have so many fake people. Anyway, TWK, can you contact me on Google Plus to uh, bring you in to tell your tale of the big blip? Fuck you! You know what? I love, I love this fucking guy. This fucking wannabe fucking boss. This Eric guy. Eric Chirazzo. The Chorizo. The fucking quesadilla. A fucking... Uh, of fucking the zero level dot com, the guy can run a website. He knows how to embed videos. He knows how to encode videos. He knows how to set up a website, but he can't figure out how to add somebody at Google Plus. It's fucking amazing. The guy knows how to tag his website so he gets a is in there with the top fifty thousand viewed websites of the internet. The guy knows how to make a website that can get $50,000 a year in ad revenue, but he can't figure out Google+. He's trying. Figure that He's one trying out. To, you call me. 
The guy can work a web can create a website that can get fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars in ad revenue a year, but he can't figure out a Google Plus. It's amazing. Can you actually hear us? Yo. Hooray! Hello? Gangster, Gangster's Paradise has just showed up. Headphones work, headphones work best for this thing, but yes, we can hear you. I can do headphones too, some of that. Yes. And for everybody who's ever fucking listened to, has uh, ever heard the stories from Channel Zero... That's right, the zero level dot com. That is the ugly mug of the person who actually runs the site. Hey. Yeah. No, don't be, don't be rude. The guy can run a fifty thousand dollar a year fucking website, but he can't figure out how to work at Google Plus and audio. And he's a DJ. Oh, and he's a DJ. Figure that one out. And Susie is contacting me in private saying right now, don't get us fired from another website. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you. Say something. All right, I got to turn this other stream down as loud as... Oh, <laughs> all right. Hey, what's up? There we go. Hey. I had to borrow some headphones. Wow, this thing fucking lags. I am so far behind. Uh, usually there's about 10, 15, 15, okay. 10 to 15 away. That's normal for live streaming. And I am probably the sh I have some of the shortest delays on the inter on the fucking market right now. Figure that one out. All right, so where are we at? Where are we doing? Man, we are live on TV. We are live on your site, my site, and fucking uh, RBT Entertainment right now. Are you, did you get kicked off Lip? Yes. Actually, uh, I have no confirmation on it, but it's also because I have not actually had a... I created my Blip page so long ago that my email address that I use to create the site is pretty much not active. Nice. Well, I apologize if I sound like crap because I'm pretty sick. I'm actually missing a really good Halloween party tonight because I don't feel good. That's why I have all this orange juice. But but you come but you come as a fucking transformer. Yeah. With the poor no, man with cut. you come as a transformer with the poor man's hat. Poor man's <laughs> hat. Not all of us have stunning hairlines like yourself, sir. Hey, I spent a lot of money to get a fucking hairdo like this. This is ten dollars for the Puerto Ricans down the block. Congratulations on your setting a wedding date finally. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But so, uh. <laughs> but you couldn't possibly find a place farther away to do it though, could you? Huh? Well, well we're fine. we're going on Su we're, <laughs> we're going on Susie's uh we're going on Susie's family. Well, shit. So Liv fucked everything up for a lot of people and uh it sucks because uh we've lost a few people from channel zero due to it and uh most of them want to continue on youtube but a lot of them are kind of just you know like uh, ben from canada is not doing his podcast anymore because of it and uh it just kind of sucks because you know people are just trying to do their thing and blip always had this like policy against like patch videos and shit now they got this whole giant pet section so they're getting rid of all these people to make room for a pet sex, which is retarded. All right, so I'm assuming you did get the actual email this week. No, I got an email saying that we're good, we're fine. My show's not going to get kicked off. Okay, I assumed I. All right, this this just shows the model employee I am. I did not even know you had a show. I just assumed you just no, did web. No, you were a, a webmaster. I have a, I have a show, but. Uh, 
uh, it's just something for us. Like, mostly I do YouTube stuff. Blip is just kind of, I started doing Blip. We only have, like, eight episodes. But, I mean, the, one of the things is, is that, like, it, it's weird the way that Blip contacted us because we've interviewed Doug Walker and had Doug Walker on our show before. And I, I wonder if that has something to do with it because our other videos, we don't generally have a lot of stuff on our channel, if you know what I mean. And I haven't really posted any, anything of, uh, of valuable content in, like, a year because we were on hiatus because of all the conventions we've been going to. So I, I really I have no idea why they pick who they pick. Maybe it's because we have a lot of skits on our show or it's high definition. or I have no idea. Well, that, pretty much as far as I know, we're the only ones that watch my show. It's like the people that personally I know like in real life. So it's like, it's weird. Well, from according to my views from your fucking website, uh, I think that's a very good truth. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know. Like, I, 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 I've looked at your, I've looked at the web traffic. I've looked at the web traffic for the zero level dot com, and you're doing very well. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, when I did the I ad, when I did an ad, little, I have this little program that actually will tell me the ad revenue for a website. And when I did it on the zero level dot com, it said almost fifty thousand a year, but I get three views a week. Yeah, the the thing is, is it's like a lot of our. A lot of our views and stuff are not monetizable views because for Google AdSense, I have everything connected. Like for Blip, our show doesn't make anything. Like, but it all makes a lot on YouTube. You know what I mean? It's really weird. Yeah. I mean, th that's... That, it's definitely an exaggerated amount. Like, I'm not going to give away any of the actual figures for our site because I, I don't even trust those. But uh, the thing is, is like we get a lot of hits that I don't know if it's just like I don't know where a lot of it comes from, but a lot of it. It basically a lot of it goes to the forums, you know, and it, it, it we don't get money from the forums because the forums are like part of our SEO that does a lot better than the front site for some reason. Because most people know that if you can just watch something in the forums, you can avoid all the ads and all the other shit. So that's where we get a lot of our traffic is the forum, which kind of sucks. But it's like I said, I don't really do this for money. We do it, we do it just because we like doing it. So it, it'd be nice to make fifty thousand a year off of it. Hmm. So, do but you... I don't want to be that. I don't want to be one of those sites that's just like. Ads everywhere. No, that's stupid. I hate. Them. Oh, they're annoying. They're always annoying. But the uh, no, our site, our site's definitely supposed to be for the viewer, not for us. I mean, but the the question is, do you think the reason your account, your Blip account, and many of your site, your site staff, split Blip accounts got canceled, is it because they were not making enough money, or do you think it was, was it because they authenticated their accounts? I don't know how that is because Oddity Archive got axed and they, they were a very unique show on, on Blip for a long time and uh, he still does stuff on YouTube but I know people watched his show because it was very unique. He got really good numbers and it's just like it's hard to tell man it's it's like they went through the thing and they got they're trying to ax anyone that doesn't have high definition and then you look and there's people that don't have high definition still. So it's hard to pinpoint exactly what their process for thinking is on that. No. Uh... I, I'm not going to defend Blip because I think what they're doing is bullshit. I think they should have an open market because obviously everybody starts somewhere. But I'm almost thinking that the people they're canceling out are the people who didn't authenticate. What was it? The authenticating the site. You know, the people who didn't have the scribe buttons and the fancy freaking templates in the back and all that stuff. That's they kind of forced you to have all of that at a certain point. And once they started doing the, the enhanced pages, I mean... I still see some shows that don't have any of that. And, I mean, we have all that. Maybe they do think that some people aren't taking it seriously. But, I mean, they Not should have just been like, hey, you can do this to fix this. There's really something else going on that's... I don't think this is the last round of cuts, to be honest. I it's think that not. Up with things. It's, yeah, I it's think not. It's up going with things to be... A, there's going to be another... There's going to be another round of cuts. I can guarantee that. I'm just trying to figure out what... I'm trying to figure out what is what caused it. What was the situation that made them choose the people? The only thing I can think of is like that there's people who have like obviously the scribe button and authenticated their accounts and have it all pretty and nice and clean. And well, there I mean, seem to be the people, they're I mostly the people who personally. seem to not get cut. Well, I have all that stuff on my show personally. But like I said, it's it's kind of hit or miss. I mean, I've seen people up there with garbage audio or garbage video, and they're still on there. And it's just like, maybe 
maybe they're looking at numbers because some of our views we have pretty good views on some of our numbers like our Doug Walker interview has something like 50,000 views or something so I mean maybe they're just like oh these guys have potential to do good and maybe some people were getting like 10 views and they got them but then I hear of other people that are like I, I only get like you know 30 cents per episode and uh, I, I'm still here and so it's just like who knows what the hell they're thinking I don't know much about this maker company either like here's the thing that's weird like when we started Channel Zero we didn't know jack shit about the reviewing or whatever they call what they call it, the reviewerverse or whatever. Um, it's just kind of like we had no idea. It was just we watched some reviews. Like we started with Angry Video Game Nerd, and then you know we obviously saw Doug Walker and all that stuff. We're like, that sounds cool. We should do something because we do digital content mostly. It's music because we do a lot of music stuff because I come from the nerdcore community. Like uh, I got a show coming up on October on the twenty first, like one of the biggest nerd music shows. But when I got interested in video, it was because I started doing music videos. And then it was like, I like these shows. We should do one of these. So we came out of nowhere. And uh, when you saw us at MAGFest, that was literally our first time meeting, like, anyone from from the, from the anywhere. Like, even our own site. It was like, hey, you know, the, all these people are really cool. And uh, no. we know nothing about Blip. We know nothing about Maker. We know nothing about any of the intricacies that go in. We don't care. I mean, obviously, I focus on my own site. You've, you've seen that. So it's just kind of like... The biggest concern for me as a person running my site and trying to take care of my people is who got who got axed and how can we fix this so that they can yeah. stay up and running. Well, come, one thing about you is coming from a website designer, person who not so much is a figure face in the, like on the site. You're not the face of the site. ChannelZero.com no. is not Eric is not Eric Charzo's site. You're not the fucking guy in the little swirly <laughs> fucking Looney Tunes face. You're the well, webmaster. You're the webmaster. You're the guy who runs everything. So this has to be a editing hell for you because you have to now wait for everybody to re-upload their videos to YouTube well, or fucking Daily Motion or any other website and then re-embed it. That has well, to be, what, suck. four years of freaking content that has to get re-embedded? Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you also got to understand when we started embedding that content, we had to go through that in the first place. Like, uh, we just added... To our roster, we added the the really awesome um, shit. I'm terrible with names. The the red hat agony booth lady, uh, suit. Oh, Sophie. 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 Yeah, Sophie. Uh, I like I like uh, Sophie. She, I don't know if she likes me, but I like Sophie. Yeah, she joined up with Channel Zero, so we got to go and follow our stuff on there. I'm basically just gonna make Patrick Alexander post it all because he's been kind of our like go to guy for posting things since he's furloughed from the military right now. <laughs> <laughs> But normally I have Seamus do it, but he's useless. Patrick can tell you all about that. You've seen him. You've seen what happens. We, you were at MAGFest. My camera guy was drunk. Well, if if you haven't figured out, I couldn't... I don't remember much from MAGFest. It was kind of a blurry kind of fucking alcohol fusion night for weekend of nine. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty crazy. All I know is that I got hammered, something happened, and next you know I was on Channel Zero and I was fired from RVT. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously stuff going on in the background of everyone's shows and everything, but the blip thing's kind of a big deal, and it sucks because no one has any control over it. But it's like you and me have discussed, we also show all of our stuff on YouTube as well because everyone knew Christmas was coming. This stuff doesn't last forever. You know, if you're not yeah. personally hosting your own stuff on your own site, some it's potentially probably going to end up somewhere someday. You know? Well, I know it doesn't for... last forever. I know from uh, my own standpoint is I've been warning this since the first cut... And I put it. I I did a segment on this show where it was not cool enough for Blip, where I had actually um, Ryder Block come on and tell his story because I found out that he was like the first wave of the people who got fired. And I put that b video out, and I even said during that fucking segment, I said, "Change your stuff out. Don't just put yeah. your stuff on Blip. Put it on YouTube. Put it on Daily Motion." Put it on, what's it, Meta Cafe or whatever the hell that other fuck yeah, there's, thing is. There's springboard video get get your shit places. on other things. Because well, if that, Blip that's, goes that's down, like we're all, you, you're done. We try, to, we try to put it on everything. We just, we're just like, like I said, before I even saw any of that stuff, I'm like, what can I put my stuff on? How many robots can I set up to go and post my show everywhere? And I was like, okay, YouTube, Tumblr, you know, and it's like, so I try to set up this stuff, you know, as a weapon with as many robots as possible to do all the work for us. So it's kind of like I had to go and investigate a bunch of these sites as well. Um, however, also sometimes when sites do see you do multiple things, they get kind of pissed off because you're not exclusive content. 
So that's why we ended up with Flip, because they allowed us to just cross-post directly to YouTube. So I've been doing that since day one, and it really kind of, I was when you told me that people weren't doing that, I was like, really? It's like automatically in the settings. Everybody's back content should already be on YouTube. So it was really weird. Or YouTube, or like I said, like Media Calf or Daily Motion or there's so many video hosts and sites. It, you shouldn't exclusively put yourself to Blip. Well, it's funny too because there used to be before they bought YouTube, Google had its own video site. So maybe they'll bring that back. I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna keep Termings using everyone, you know, cease and desisting everyone just because they want to do review shows. That kind of sucks. Because I know it's hard for me whenever I do our review show to monetize that because we, you know, I, I'm sure I could go in there and be like, hey, you know. This is all the paperwork, but it would be a pain to do every time. Yeah, but you're already in the pain because, yet again, as being a host site of a web of a third party website, every single video that's on Blip of your contributors who have been kicked, who's going to be taken down in the next two weeks, you have to now go back and re embed their videos to their YouTube channel. Or oh, their right. other, okay. other, other hosts, whatever host site they're using, other than Blip. Yeah, that is a wrong. lot like of the, work. Out of like the like 25, 30 shows we have, we've not really lost that many people. We've lost, I think, four to five people. Um, the only thing we lost for you, since your page is set up as a stream, is your uh, your skits, which we can just switch to YouTube anyways. Which so I already like, did. I did yeah, that. So I did that months ago just because I saw this coming. Yeah, I mean. Generally, most of the people that work on Channel Zero, we do it while we're working. Like, my job is a security manager in a car dealership. That's my day job. And I literally sit in front of a computer all day at my day job programming my websites. So, I mean, it's not a big deal for me. It, it takes time, sure, and it sucks. But, I mean, you just it's part of the job. You know, you just got to keep doing it. But it's funny, though. Since you mentioned the whole you're not the face of the website, funny little uh, funny little anecdote to that. It's called TheZeroLevel.com because my show is called The Zero Level. And it originally was going to start out as our show's website, but since we've only done like eight episodes in like a, I don't know, two years, we decided that maybe we should just let other people be the guys that most people see. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's actually funny because I always figured you were just trying to get cross promotion from Channel Zero, Channel Awesome. <laughs> no, I. It, it and that's what ninety percent of the people even... who who hear Channel the Channel Zero they th assumed you're just trying to like. Cash in on the channel, awesome fucking views. And it's so weird too because like my whole thing is is that like I said we do the whole music stuff, and so like we deal with like Nerdapalooza and the music side of Magfest. Like if, if anyone saw me at Magfest, especially uh, Lin uh, Lindsay, a uh, comrade kitty, and Patrick Alexander, I'm like, hey, I gotta go hang out with the bands real quick because those are my friends, people I know in real life, and the video thing's always been like a secondary thing to me. So uh, I actually found it was kind of funny when some when a lot of those rumors came up. It's like who's Channel Zero? Who are these guys? And it's like, we're just people doing a website. <laughs> we like going to conventions. Literally, the funny thing was, is the, the reason Channel Zero ever even started, we started doing our show, because I sat there at Megacon, which happens in Florida, because Florida's overrun with conventions. And I'm just like, my friend goes to him, you know, Shane, uh, the co-host of my show, and he, he's like, I love going to conventions. And I'm like, oh, Dragon Con, I'll have some school. And I'm like, what if we did a show? Could we go to these for free? And that was literally our goal. Was like, let's see if we can start going to conventions for free if we just do our own series. And then we started getting invited to them. And now people want us to do panels. Like we just did panels, panels at Anime Festival in Orlando. And we we were special guests at NitroCon, and I got to run the whole music side of things at NitroCon. And it's just like we formed all these alliances with a lot of conventions. And then it's like, oh, you guys are just ripping off Channel Awesome. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that site. I got to interview Doug Walker next week. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's like. You know, it's kind of an afterthought, so it's kind of weird to hear all this stuff. Well, I do, I do know because you did say like you oh, work mostly it sucks with that Shark Wayne. Shark Wayne, we did lose Shark Wayne. That really sucks because he's been doing videos for like four years, and he's like the nicest guy in the world. And, and it's like losing Shark Wayne really kind of sucks. Oh, trust me, I I know because me and Shark Wayne go a long, long way back. Me, me and Shark Wayne go back way farther than Channel Zero, way longer than our independent stuff. We've been doing videos together for a long time, working together on shows, and it sucks that we lost him. But yeah. if he just needs to upload to fucking YouTube, he will. I'm sure he will. He's not going to stop. He's yeah, been doing this for too he's, long. He's not. And, uh, he, he he he's part of the exile. He's part of the um, 
the misfit toys, as I like to call us at this point. Yeah, well, and not that's to, not thing we're too. we're part of the, like the not cool enough for critic TV guys. Uh, well, that's the other funny thing too is like I actually used to have this joke a while back where Channel Zero is like the bad news bears of the review universe because we seem to always get all the people that have either gotten in trouble with other sites or just people that want to do their own thing and it's weird because when we get a lot of you guys you're so great it's like why did these guys fire you you're awesome and it's like it's really fun being friends with a lot of you guys so it's it's kind of confusing and i'm just like wow i'm not gonna let these guys get fucked like uh i think i'm enigmas in the chat isn't he yeah i, Nig- I put Nigma on the stream thing. which yeah, by the way i've been pitching i've been wanting to pitch to you for a long time you should get him on i know i actually sent him a message where i said uh, hey, you know, you're a really cool dude with a, really, a lot of really good shows, and it's just kind of the offers out there if you ever want to. But I mean, he's doing his own thing, and you obviously. And we just had a random naked. And we just. And we just had a random naked man walk across the background of your fucking video. <laughs> oh no, that's that's DJ Jeff MK actually. He's cutting his hair for a Hollywood party. Either way, oh, there was still a random naked man walking behind you. We have naked dudes <laughs> in our house all the time. Really? It's when when do you live? Because, you know, I might want to hang out there sometime. It's, uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, I might do a video later, but I, I, we basically live in, like, this weird, like, Swap house. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I imagine it to be, like, Hugh Hefner's first house before he moved into the Playboy Mansion. Like, we got a pool and a hot tub, and, like, there's six of us living here. One guy even lives in the garage. One guy sleeps behind a couch. Actually, Jeff MK sleeps behind the couch in my video gaming room. So it's really weird, but I mean, that's from the music scene. Most of us here are either in bands locally around here, or we run music shows. So, uh, I don't, I know you you say that like uh, Channel Zero is more of a music site versus a actual reviewer site. Well, no, I don't say that it's uh, it's not a music site. It is a reviewer site. It's just it's just not where I come from personally. it's more mu- it's from... more it's more music themed which is one of the reasons why you picked me up but it's because you saw somebody who could actually do a live radio show every week well that's the whole well I actually picked you up because I met you at, at Nightfest and I really liked you I don't generally pick people based on their shows or their quality I don't know if you've noticed but um like uh KMX Koopa his show is really bad but like really bad in a good way but it, he's actually retiring I don't even know if he's announced that yet but he's going to be retiring for videos while he's in college. But um, his video and audio are terrible, but I love the guy. He's so funny. Like, he's such a great person. I was like, you got to be on our site. He was, like, the first one that was like, okay. But I, I'm trying to build a strong, like, family here. Like, the one thing I do like about Channel Awesome is that a lot of them seem to be friends. And even though some of it seems to be written in as if it's not, like, entirely real, I try to keep it real on our site where most of the people – I'm trying to build that whole we all know each other and that whole that whole family of like we just want to do a lot of cool stuff and we want to go in the same direction you know so that's really all I'm trying to do by running a website like that I mean if I was trying to kick videos off of my site for crappy quality I wouldn't have a show anymore well there's a thing there's a thing that I always find fucking funny about like the internet community in general is people people tend to, like, watch the quality of a show and go... And this is something that's happened in the recent years just because the big guys, the main guys, the headliners, you know, the the elite have professional video equipment. They're professional studios. They have everything professionally worked out now. And us guys who are younger and, and not ex- as successful can't afford the equipment they have and I think people look at us like down at us because we don't have the equipment, don't have the fucking technology, don't have the ex- experience. And honestly, I think about all these videos I watched in the early days. I've been watching internet videos for I don't even know how long. I remember when Doug Walker was still doing freaking 10 second films. I remember, I remember Brad Jones when he was still on YouTube. Doing those early fucking little summaries of a DVD, right. and anybody, if those videos video. came out now, people would laugh at it because of the quality. But it's what you you it's what you had at the time, and you don't overextend your budget. You don't buy good equipment if you're not bringing in the mo- the the revenue to balance out the fucking cost, and that's right. a big thing. Well, well that's it. 
that's kind of where we cheat because like all of our money goes towards Channel Zero stuff. Like we when we we try to we want to give everybody their T-shirts. I have a whole box of them sitting there, but I can't afford to ship them right now because I got actually my hours got cut. Yeah, I, I remember of, because several. I I do remember because several times you kept contacting me saying like I want to send you a Channel Zero shirt. I'm like why. Yeah, like, well, it's, oh, no, they look cool. You wear it on the stream, and, you know, you get the logo there. It's like, I don't brand myself. I had no, other than the Hypno no Starp, there's no brand. I unless I am working for, unless I am showing off XNO, XNO, Nick and Nick streams fucking websites, I don't, I don't, I don't promote any fucking logos. <laughs> yeah, well, like, the thing for Channel Zero, a lot of people misconstrue that, too, is because, I just want people at conventions to recognize us because since since a lot of us here wear the shirts, we get noticed in public a lot. People come up and talk to us about the stuff that we do. It's not really so much to, to brand. I, I mean, I guess I guess from a like a merchandising way that yeah, but I mean, like I said, we're not doing it for the money. It's just that we're proud of what we are and we want to represent it. And that's like I don't care if you get a T-shirt and you wear it on the on the stream. I don't care if you ever wear it. It's just the fact that well, I actually, the say, big the hey, big you came into a part of this. I wanted to give you something. Also, the biggest thing. Also, the biggest thing is the reason I refuse to wear the Channel Zero shirt is is because it's white. It's a white shirt with a blue logo. If you it's if you can send me a black shirt, what? No, what? if no, if you can what? change that, if you no, change the blue. White shirts, man. If you mean. change that logo, that blue logo to a red logo, I will wear it every fucking week. I have a oh, brand man. to take care yeah, of. My so colors so are so black so and so red. So I'm not. Yeah, I need. So I need that kind of support. You send, send me you a one. red. You change that blue to a red. I I'm might wear it. You one. I'm not gonna. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even afford to send shirts halfway down the street right now. That's how bad things are in the world of channels. There. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I really wish that. I, you know, I might just do like an online store where people can just like get different versions of the shirts and logos because that's another problem that we had. Is that uh. When I initially started sending out shirts, I had to send one up to the Cinemasochist in Canada, and it cost me $45, and then plus how much the shirt cost. And I was like, I, wow, I can't afford this. This is terrible. <laughs> I'd love to do this, but half of our people are overseas. So it's, it's just like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I want to do all this other stuff, but I can't ask you guys to pay for things. Like, I, I wouldn't feel right doing that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, I mean, oh, dude, I don't, I don't even know. No, like, the, I don't even get a lot of time uh, to talk. I mean, I you've barely ever seen me even do meetings with Channel Zero. It's just kind of like I try to be as unobtrusive to people as possible. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to do, do I'm not trying to do stuff. like a kick in the balls Channel Zero night because I love the site. I like the, I, I actually really like the site. I love the fucking, the way it's laid out, the way the producers can put up videos. I like it. You guys are efficient. You do your job. You do everything I need. And by the way, you don't bother me in any sense of the fucking term other than showing up to the show and actually appreciate and appreciating the content. So overall, I have no problem with Channel Zero, but this isn't what I'm trying to do tonight because yeah, I'm sorry, tonight it's it, tonight it's about fuck you blip. Coming from somebody really, who's I, who's I, getting I really, taken off. My really biggest problem with blip is like I said, they're getting rid of a lot of fucking really good content to host animal videos. Have you seen the new pet section? They have a pet section. Why the fuck are they doing that? I don't I, I don't give a shit about cat videos. I'm like the 1% of the internet that doesn't give a shit about cat videos. So I, I, don't, I don't understand why the fuck they're doing that. It's stupid. I, I, I think it's stupid. It makes sense because, let's face it, animal videos are the highest viewed things on the internet. Yeah, well, fucking tell people why you're kicking them off, though, because if they're going to reapply to be on the show, they need to know what the fuck you think they're doing wrong. Well, that's that's why I want to get a number of people in on this. I want to get a number of people with their own stories, because if we get more people who've been kicked off or people who've been approved, too, I don't want just people who've been kicked off. I want people who's been approved at the same time. We can yeah. balance out those stories, and we can try to logically figure out what is going on in the executives of blip.tv.com? Yeah, well, I'm gonna get. Out I don't want this to be a kick. I don't want this to be a ball kicking segment. I want this to be like a literally. This is your story. Right. This is your right. life on the interweb. 
Yeah. You're going to have to talk to the other guys about that because Pat, Patrick's talked to a lot of them. I would talk to Patrick Alexander because he, he deals with a lot of our content producers directly. And so. we actually got him coming in right now. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Eric, for joining us here on Cine Radio Live. We're... Thank you for having me. Man, it's no problem. I've been wanting to get you on. I always like to get at least one boss every fucking week. I'm not fucking boss, guy. Can I at least give a middle figure and say Blade Canada? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Alright, I'm out of here. You guys have fun. Alright, thank you. Thanks for coming. Do we have a Patrick? I don't know. Do you? Yes, uh, yes we, we, do. we we can hear some audio. Can we get a video? Uh, that's a very good question. Guess. Sounds like you're trying monkey. Try to get this thing on on Google. The webcam's on. Okay. Do you see the little clog up in the right hand side? Alright. You see the clog. You see the clog, you click that and then you it and then you pick which uh, camera you want working. Yeah, I'm trying. Yes, not exactly the most professional segment, but this is a big, this is a, what considered a giant F you to BlipTV.com. Blip.TV.com. So get on your Twitter, get on your Facebook, get on your social media, tell people where you are, tell them. We're ha- if you have a beef with Blip, come on the show. Get on Google Plus and tell us about your problems. Fuck. Yeah, I don't know, I can't. I mean, that's the webcam I'm using, which is currently on, but it doesn't seem to want to work. I think it'll be okay without it. It's fine. We'll, we'll uh, survive with just oh, audio. Oh, you're fine, Patrick. It's okay. Yeah, I'm hot. sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're using new technology. New technology. <laughs> We're gonna blame Gremlins. So Patrick, so Patrick, the question of the hour is: Has your Blip account been taken off? Nope, I am a survivor. Okay, you That's... are a survivor. Um, yeah. Were you authenticated? Did you have like the nice backdrops and the subscribe button and all that stuff? Yep, I've, I'm enhanced. I'm pro. So I mean. I... Really, fact that Blip likes me. Alright. Uh, I don't know why, because <laughs> I don't have a lot of views. Because my views, on average, is around like 100, 120, 150. I mean, every so often you get something that breaks through, but not often. So you're what we consider the low rent videos one of the low right video shows and you're still authenticated you're you're still fine you're cool you're good for the mm-hmm. you're good to go for the next couple months yeah 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 like I me mean, i should be i didn't say I, I should be fine with you know when there was a bloodbath that went on but <coughs> yeah i think i should be around for a while until they start kind the enhanced profiles, if and when that happens. All right. Do you have any theory on why you were actually capped versus so many people who got dropped? Well, I mean, when I say Blip likes me, I'm not really lying. Because on the music section, I've been actually on the, you know, the side scroll thingy, the slide bar. I, I'm featured on there. And I'm a staff pick on the Blip's music section. So it's like, Blip likes me, even though nobody watches my show. But I'm in good with Blip for some reason. That's my theory. Alright, uh, do you think that you're in good standings because you do a genre that's not as popular? Like, you do a music review show, and it's a very good... 
it's a very good music review show. But I do, I'm, I'm, and this is just friendly critique, and your quality is not up to par with the elitists. Do, right, do you I, think? I do you think you're there still because you have a genre that is not heavily freaking marketing, or do you think you're there because you have good quality? Uh, I guess a little of both, really. Because I mean, you, I mean, music. Not saying like a music review show. I mean. What, there's Tom the Shadows, there's the rap critic. I guess there's Muse. But, I mean, who else is there? Uh, I know, it's, it, that's what I'm thinking. It's a very. It's a slender. It's a slender genre, like music reviewers. Like, everybody knows the movie critics, everyone knows the video game critics. Mm -hmm. So, I'm wondering. I'm, I'm I'm not talking down to anybody's quality. I'm just asking do you think you were kept because you have the best quality or because you took the effort to create a authenticated site page or because you think that you're the best of the best? Because I took the effort for the authenticated site page. Yes. yes. Because right as of right now, team. from all my research and everyone I talked to, the people who've been dropped are the people who basically didn't have the subscribe button. That didn't make did didn't have Photoshop to make that fancy little back template. No, I don't have Photoshop. I pay the Cinemascus for fancy graphics that I have. Yeah, you don't need to have Photoshop to get that that graphic yeah. done. You need you need. A, uh, a photo editing program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, the people who the peop the people but, who I mean, are getting dropped. Thing, the point. the people who are being dropped are the people who. Uh, let, I want to get somebody who actually can prove this wrong, but it seems like the people who are getting dropped are the people who didn't have that authenticated site. They didn't have that little subscribe button. Who didn't have the fancy page layout and either didn't have the didn't have the programs to make the little Photoshop fucking backdrops and the freaking logos and stuff versus the people yeah. who actually did manage to get that done. I, I'm thinking that the people who got dropped are the ones who didn't have the authenticated site, who didn't get the subscribe button, who didn't get yeah, and everything. Being, yeah, and for what I know, you're right. Like, let's go back to the people we lost on Channel Zero. Starkwing didn't have an enhanced account. Ben from Canada didn't have an enhanced account. ID Archive didn't have an enhanced account. I think Alex, Alex the D, Move Questions Answered, he got caught from Blip. I don't think he ever had an enhanced account. Yeah, I know um, Gomer was cut, and he didn't have one as well. Yeah, and, but... Uh, Haley, as well, Charlie's fiance. I know she didn't have one either. Yeah, and, um, so, good example. You know, Haley didn't get picked up, yeah. <coughs> but um, I I didn't get the straight story. I never got the straight story. If Charlie, I know Cole, what you like got kept, which has a official page. That does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus, I'm not sure it's Spaz Masters RP, you know, Rebel Bank Geek mm -hmm. production got kept because I know that didn't have a link to have the subscribe button. I believe he got kept because uh, Trickster Bell is. Or plus fan or whatever, you know his wife or fiance, whatever. Yeah, his, is uh, soon to be wife. To his account. I know uh, the angry ginger and Danny Self. They, they're kept, but they don't have the enhanced uh, pages. You right. know uh, the diva, musical hell. She's she's still alive there, but she does she doesn't have the enhanced account. All right, so this this is where I, I want to bang my head into the wall and just keep banging it and banging it and banging it into the wall because it almost seems like there's no rhyme, no reason what, where Blip is picking and choosing. Yeah. Other than maybe yeah. views. And I know some of the people you just mentioned there barely get 120 views an episode. So it right. just counteracts any theory I have. It, it right, literally uh, seems like they're putting my, names in a hat and pulling them out. Yeah, because my theory, at least right from what I've noticed, 
this won't be the end of the blip cuts. If, you know, Danny Sells and Angry Ginger and people without the enhanced accounts are still there, they're next in the next cuts or the cuts after. Yeah, it's still... it's more or less they're the people they're... who have accounts that just blip isn't aware of. They're, t they're, they're the, because let's face it, there's a whole, thousands and thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of people who have blip accounts. They're, and it seems like the people who got cut are the people who are more public. Uh, yeah. Like a good example, I, I'm just looking at like some of my own, um, I don't know about mine because I, like I said earlier, I don't. Yeah. I've had a blip account so long that I don't remember the email address I, I yeah, created it with, and I don't even think it's active anymore, so I can't even tell. But, yeah, but if you go to your dashboard, LC, there, if you're cut, there, should, there will be a message saying, hey, you're cut, you're no longer able to upload videos, and you can be terminated on whatever day they're I, I, that I wasn't aware of. Uh, Patrick, can you explain that one more time? If you do have a blip account and you've yeah, been caught, you, what 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 shows up on the on the page? Uh, the same message as the emails. If you're caught, there will be a message saying you're you know you're no longer able to upload videos and you, you will be caught on whatever day the cutting happens. All right, because I know when the big blip. A simmer, simile, as everyone was calling it, yeah. happened earlier this week. I went to Blip and I started, I literally started downloading videos that I didn't upload to YouTube just because I, they were just older stuff that didn't kind of, didn't, either didn't quite fit with what I do now or just I never got around to. And I didn't right. see that. So I don't know if I'm saved or not. I, I doubt it. Yeah, you need to check your Blip dashboard, hon, just to check. Yeah, though, I mean, if you're been around as long as you say you have, I think you're, like, grandfathered in forever. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a pro account now. Like, uh, well, yeah, yeah I, I submitted it. I remember when Susie was here, I think her first or second time she was here, like, in Albany. I remember she set it all up for me. She said, all, you know... Did all the photoshopping and try to set it in and submitted it and I never heard shit back. Yeah, no, you don't. They just do it. Well, yeah, but my, my page is not authenticated. I know yeah. that from just going uh, to it. I mean, it's, but I do yeah, know... I do know as of right now, like, I do have a, a side freaking blip channel that mm -hmm. is not taken down. Right. So, but I'm wondering if the people on the radar are the people who are middle ground. Obviously, if you're if you're in, like, the higher view section, you're safe. They're not going to get rid of you. If you're in middle, it's going to be pick and choose. And if you're lower, they just haven't gotten to you. That's what I'm really wondering. Yeah. I, I think it's to do with a number of things, really. I think it's one... If you have a, um, an, an account set up with um, like all the pictures and everything to make it look more professional, mm -hmm. so it's easier for them to advertise. Yeah. Two, if, uh, depending on what your view count's like, I think they would be looking for that. And probably the third one is whether or not they like it. Yeah, because... I and, think and ding, 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 that is the key question. Are they judging it on... Who is the best contributor, or is it is it my taste? Yeah, that's the scary part because you know it's so arbitrary. Like, uh, because on the Tigre Tape forums, Painkiller Blues reviews, he got cut, and he you know sent a trouble ticket to Blip saying, "Hey, I'm sorry, I'm not Blip worthy. What can I do to make myself Blip worthy?" And Blip flat out said, "We do not devote our reviewing." practices in this regard. They just told him that straight up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, with a Seafarer being cut, I mean, he shook his peeping there long enough before Blip gave him a real answer saying his audio wasn't good enough and, his, like, his composition, his shot layouts weren't good enough for Blip. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is... That's the 
thing about Blip that I don't like is how arbitrary they're doing it. Plus, as a Chozo already said, I'm the guy who, who nine times out of ten uploads the your videos up on Channel Zero. Now I have to go to Sharkwing's side and you know switch his blip to YouTube. I have to do the same with Alex and D. I may have to do the same thing with Audi Archive, depending on if he's successful in his appeal to blip or not. So right now, so you got a big pain in the ass, and then there's still a couple. Channel Zero people whose political cards that are kind of, you know, not enhanced, Comrade King, the NPC reviews, that I'm worried that they're cut and they're not, um, being, and they haven't told us. Yeah, yeah no, know, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a twisted way of doing it, but I, I kind of wonder if they've done this to kind of give people a kick up the ass to kind of, mm -hmm. if they're cut from it, then to, kind of turn things to around, try and work on the show to get it back up. I don't know if that's what it is. It, it might be a twisted way of thinking about it, but yeah. I think it could be what they're trying to do. It's like they've seen shows like, okay, these ones are oh, these ones are good. We'll keep these for now, or whatever they're mm -hmm. going to do. And the other ones will just say, well, we'll tell them that we're taking off just now mm -hmm. to kind of motivate it really twisted sounded like to kind of motivate them to work yeah. on their show and come back even though a lot of them had good stuff yeah I mean like okay I mean here's something I don't have much time to watch everybody's stuff but I was going to, like block out some time and sit down work and watch the audio guy because when I was putting up his backlog on the channel zero website it was like his stuff was his this stuff was always so intriguing, it was like, damn I wish I had more time mm -hmm. to, you know, so I can actually sit down and watch this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, I, okay, I mean, he was somebody that I want to succeed. And, well, like a mystery madness, full of questions, sure show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something, I mean, yeah, it was an opposite joke, but... It was always like the detective movies and or mystery stuff. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to Mendo, she her pill to stay up lip succeeded, so she so she's going to be fine. Yeah. Well. No, there are a lot of them that I am really surprised. Like, um, I like I like watching Homer's videos. I like. Mm -hmm. I could sit and marathon his Let's Play of Super Mario Brothers, The Lost Levels, for a couple of weeks. I love his videos, but I don't know whether it is to do with whether the people that blip themselves like the show or not. I think taste does come into it for them, which is not a very professional thing to really be doing. Yeah. I think they need to be looking at what works uh, from an audience standpoint, what they consider a good show, but... Yeah, I mean, I think there's... I mean, there needs to be, like, a set public standards. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, they say, no Let's Plays. Let's look at Johnny Old School, Apps and Commentator. Half of their videos are Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. I'm blip. Well, I so, get... That, that's the other thing. It's like, are they... They, they're saying they just want the highest standard of quality videos mm -hmm. on their site. And it's understandable. I mean, they don't want to be known as the second-rate YouTube. But right, right. when they're dropping people who are Let's Players, but keeping other Let's Players, mm -hmm. dropping people who have original content but just might not have the best microphone or the best camera but keeping people who just re-upload freaking Karma Rider videos and other freaking hentai other Japanese freaking shows or some other copyrighted material where is the standard? Where is the level? Where is the balance? Where do these people find what is acceptable and what isn't. And that's what I really would like to know. I just want to know yeah, what is your quality. Cause yeah, that's why I was telling Susie that, you know, the thing that really irks me about this is Blip 
has no like s set standard um like guide to not being caught and if they do they're now sharing it with the people with the natives so to speak mm -hmm. there should there should be kind of like a asking the public their opinion on certain shows like should not publicly doing the should we keep this person should we not if there's been shows that are are cut and um, they kind of give the audience a chance to <coughs> to answer back whether or not they like the shows or not. Kind of like a kind of like a private polling system or something. I don't know. But just not yeah. out of the blue, just cutting people willy nilly and not giving any rhyme or reason really. Yeah. Oh. And uh, another thing, uh, I forgot. Big Cal VW or whoever on the chat was saying about how, you know, Channel Awesome, you know, let's protect their fears, and apparently, you know, Nerds at the Third, they got caught, but apparently Channel Awesome flexed their muscle and got them reinstated. That and, I know, was... Podcast. That I was not aware of. Well, I mean... I d no, uh, Patrick, can you... Can, Patrick, how much, so, how much of this story do you know? Because I don't want to be spreading rumors. Well, this is from the Tickway Tape forums is where I heard, you know, Nerd Third did get caught. It's on their Twitter, apparently. But apparently, well, now this is conjecture, this is rumor, this is what somebody said on the Tickway Tape forums. So who knows if this is true. But what they said was that Channel Awesome had lived bring a state Nerd Third. Okay, because, like, yet yeah, again, I said, I was not aware of this information and that just makes this whole scenario sound so much more fucked up like yeah it seems like blip it and this is i don't want to be kicking blip down because they're a good video hosting site they have a great website they had a great video player but it's give me rhyme and reason give me standards give me a freaking outline of what you want don't just say, no, you're not good enough. No, you're not good enough. Yes, you're good. It's literally duck, 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 goose at this point for who they want and who they don't want. It's literally like I feel like they're picking names out of a hat. And somebody, I, I never got a confirmation on this, but I think Lord Cat might have got cut too. Yeah, I mean, I said I that know that guy brings in thousands of views. Okay, but here's the thing with Lord Cat. When was the last time he actually uploaded a video on Blip? Regularly, because most actually most of his stream most of his streams get uploaded right to Blip. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, all of his know. web shows, all of his stream shows get uploaded right to Blip. They're not edited, they're not cut, they're just raw uploaded, but those videos itself still get thousands of views. I did not know that he uploaded Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And whatever else he chooses, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know the system that they're working on. If people like Lord Cat are getting caught, I really don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this is uh, honestly, I'm a businessman. I have business training. I got a lot of business like experience. I could tell you what normally on a normal business would be doing this stuff. I could look at a scenario and go, okay, I can understand from a business point of view why they would be doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, etc. Like, I know business down to a science. Mm -hmm. I'm watching what they're doing and I can't figure it out. And that's what really scares me. Is the fact that as a trained professional somebody who's managed maybe not websites but somebody who's managed managed like bar and restaurants 
and who's been in charge of freaking companies at some point or another. I'm looking at their business decisions and I can't figure it out. And that's what truly scares me. Like, I don't get this. It's no rhyme, no reason behind it. Right. And that's the truly scariest part for me right now is that I can't figure out why. Because everything is completely in the air. It seems like it's literally, mm -hmm. it, they're picking names out of the hat. Yeah, yeah, because I, okay, I know, like, quite a few guys on, you know, Tiquite have said that they were cut, but they both said, yeah, well, I mean, I was on hiatus. Of course, then a big kick in the teeth is, I was just about to come out of hiatus, too. Yeah, so, I mean, I say, you know, you don't post a video, like, in quite some time. I understand why you would be cut. Or, like, uh, Geek Thoughts, Ben from Canada's show. I mean, his was a podcast. Ran it. I mean, I understand. And then yet again, and yet, Ugly, yet I don't like it, but and yet said, again, there's, the, you know, there's the, the same the third thing, if true. Yeah. But yet again, it's the same theory because you go, oh, okay, I understand. That's a podcast. There's no visuals. There's no, you know, no. There's nothing but audio. And then you see several other wet like podcasts that are still going to be at it. It, it's yeah. where I'm bouncing my head off. And oh. I'm going to ask right now. Ask him right now to the chat room as we're doing a live show. If you have Google Plus, or Google Plus Hangout and you would like to join us on this conversation, um, feel free to contact. Feel free to join us. I am giving an open freaking invitation out to everybody. I want to hear people talk. I want to hear your stories. I want to hear you actually give your theory on why this happens. I am putting my name in the chat. And add me on Google Plus and we'll try to get you in. We're going to try to get you in on the calls if you'd like. Right. So I guess it's my cue to leave, isn't it? No, that's your cue to keep talking while I set this up. <laughs> oh, he see. Yeah, he doesn't. Like no to tell conversation you. is not my strong suit. <laughs> no, he doesn't like to tell you these things, Patrick. He just assumes that you'll know. Well, I'm hey. used to working with professionals. Damn it. <laughs> hey. Usually, when I assume, you know, the LC setting up things, I meet. Get the hell out. <laughs> then again, when does when does an LC think? Patrick, get the hell out. I You've been on this show how many times and you're still asking yourself that question? <laughs> <laughs> Give me yeah. a year and a half and then I get married to him and then I get him sore today fully. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, sure, I may be a survivor, but, like, some of my friends are cuts. And then, obviously, as, and, and you know, shifting the guys that we did lost from Blip to YouTube is a going to be a big pain in the ass mm -hmm. to, you know, do that. Though, hopefully I should get Alex squared away Monday. Hopefully, I can actually get work on putting up Sophie's backlog. Yeah, uh, question, did uh, Sophie get cut? Is she one of the people that got cut no. from the uh, from she the is emerger? a survivor. I get And does I, she have the fancy subscribe button and, yes. you know, the whole thing? Yeah. Yes, she does have the... Okay, yeah. I can at least go on who I know is a survivor, like David Rose, Jaime Todd, the Suburban Prospector, the Cinemasochist. Oh, obviously me and, you know, the Zero Level. Mm -hmm. Susie is a survivor. Yeah. Oh, well. This... <laughs> the, it it literally feels like... Uh, it literally makes no sense because there's people who have the subscribe button. 
who's been authenticated. There's people who haven't been authenticated. And it's a mix of people, plus different levels of freaking, different levels of viewership, frequent freaking viewership, etc. Except there's no rhyme or reason. I literally want an answer. I want to know what is your standards. Give me something in writing or a video or something and tell me what is your standards and what do you want from me? Are you talking to Blip now, darling? Yes. I am talking yeah. to Blip. Because <laughs> I am so sure they're going to find this on YouTube, the more superior freaking web fucking hosting site. No, more superior to you. You don't use copyright materials like I do. Yeah, and yet again. Copyright versus non-copyright. Because I know I put it out. I put it out there on um, Twitter th when this first started happening. I said, I don't. Everyone should have already tried to move back to YouTube or went to YouTube because it's a more superior video hosting site. And everyone went, no, it ain't, 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 because they got the copyright laws and they fucking hassle me left and right about my copyright. Uh, yes, the copyright thing is a bitch, but you're more likely to find people. You're you're more likely to find a video on YouTube than you are on Blip. And this is coming from somebody yeah. who's going into many, many, many Google searches and typed in a subject and found three pages of YouTube videos before right. I ever even saw a Blip video. Yeah, well, I mean... Okay, I have a YouTube account, and, like, the stuff I tape at conventions, like, all the panels, that goes on the YouTube. Like, if, if, everything I film that isn't that other song. That's YouTube, and then Blip has all the, all the that other song episodes. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm thinking of just, like, shooting one of my video, one, like, the that other song pilot up and see what happens. Though... Though the thing that I'm skittish is that Henry Blues Con, the opening ceremony, when I filmed that, I put that up, like that, like, almost immediately, I got flagged for, you know, the opening ceremony using copyrighted music, yeah. using Sarah McLaughlin and some Japanese song. Yeah. That's the thing, it's usually within, uh, some of the ones I've done have taken, sometimes within 30 seconds of getting it uploaded on, it's going, no, you can't do that. Sometimes it's a couple of months before you get it. And yeah. One I had up for a year, and then it told me I couldn't have to have it up anymore. So like half of my blockbuster check episodes aren't up on YouTube because this just goes nope. And that's the that's other, that's yeah. the problem with the reviewer community. That's the problem with the review, <laughs> reviewer community because Blip was kind of the wild west of video upload sites. It was the place that didn't care about your music. It didn't care about what videos you showed. But yeah. it, it, it's a hit. It's a hit, and I'm wondering where are people going to go. Yeah, I mean, here's, I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up. If and when Blip cuts that other song, I mean, I will probably not continue doing that other song. I probably won't move it anywhere. I mean, I'm not going to go away, but I mean, that other song is, like, feel that that's a perfect place for Blip. And I don't feel it like on, it'll be right on like YouTube or Vimeo, or whatever. I mean, it may be stupid. Maybe in like a who knows, maybe in a couple months or a year, my views will change and that other song will be on YouTube as well. But I mean, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. With this thing. Of course. Because it is easier for. Reviews, like I was with copyrighted material, if you mm. have to have it as part of your show, it works on Blip. It does work on there because it's kind of hard to review a song or a movie without actually showing or letting people listen to it. <laughs> Unless you're very good at describing things. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, and very good at drawing very, uh, very good animation. Things. It's very difficult to do it on YouTube without doing that stuff. And there are other people that actually do have very high viewed shows and get to show copyrighted material. Like Game Grumps, they get to show them playing games live on 
no live, you know what I mean. They get they get to show game footage and they put, they don't get flagged up for it. Yeah, but mm -hmm. the thing about oh. gaming, it's it's almost like two different worlds. When it comes down to like gaming versus video, like movies and TV and stuff, because most of the game footage and most of the audio footage, most of the audio used in video games, never got copyrighted. Nobody thought in a hundred years to ever copyright most of that stuff, because they thought it was just going to be a fad and it would just die out. So nobody thought to copyright anything. And that's where the, the lawyers come in. Because that's why gameplay stuff is so popular. is because it, there's less likely a chance that you're going to get flagged for copyright material. Because most of the material has never been copyrighted. That and let's face it. Let's Plays like developer companies like Let's Plays because they're pretty much free advertising. That's why you don't hear anybody who isn't Nintendo go after them. Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, actually, you got a good point. I think only Nintendo actually has gone after Let's Players and people who are making, like, fan-made, like, Nintendo videos. And basically, they realized, and they, I think they're almost at the point where they stopped doing it because they realized, fuck, this is a market, and this is, this is material we're not using. We're not freaking utilizing this material, but people like it, and it sells... It, it's it still sells so if I have if a hundred of a hundred like ten million people on YouTube are watching this funny video with a freaking flash animation of Mario maybe twenty thousand of them might buy go on freaking the Wii U store and buy Super Mario Brothers 3 because it made them feel nostalgic I know. Yeah. Yeah. Because Disney goes after everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Disney's Disney's the worst. Yeah. I mean, Disney's hardcore other shit. Well, I remember I said that ages ago about, um, it was one of the facts episodes we were talking about that Disney went after somebody that put Winnie the Pooh on a gravestone. That's so batshit crazy there with copyright. I never heard that. Oh yeah, it was one of the facts that I, it was a Disney fact that I read um, on the Disney SSL. I think I probably dropped out be before yeah. on that, or yeah. or I was probably visiting my parents. Yeah, but no, it was um, it was a child's gravestone that had um, engraved on a picture of Winnie the Pooh because the the child loved Winnie the Pooh, so of course they wanted to put that on there, and Disney sued them for it, sued the parents for it. Right. I mean, I know about, you know, Disney going after the nursery school, like, in the late 80s. But yeah. uh, Gravestone, that's all new. That's all news to me. Uh-huh. And just anything, anything that I've seen um, that isn't to do with the Disney company themselves, with copyright, they go after it. Mm-hmm. They get it taken in straight away. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> sorry, we stood a bit away from blips there for a second. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, no. well, this, the whole thing with people like, like uh, me and Patrick and other reviewers with um, media, it is hard to actually put your own content onto YouTube without it getting flagged. Mm -hmm. If you're very lucky, can you get some coming through? Yeah, or you can join a network where apparently. This is what I read from uh, Lucara's blog post, blog post about him putting between YouTube as a syndicate. Uh, if you join a YouTube network, you a bot will not talk to you on copyright. It has to be an actual person mm -hmm. that has to flag you. The thing is, I think I lost my opportunity to go on the YouTube. Upload some things that I always... I will get that message, and last time I uploaded something for uh, a cameo, I didn't. Mm -hmm. no, it 
is, it's, it's very, very weird with it, but, it, oh, I don't know, we could keep going round and round and round the issue, yeah, really, but I, I, think, I think the general consensus I get, I personally get from it is they're looking for three separate things. One is the view count, mm -hmm. two is um, whether they have a professional looking page or not, mm -hmm. and three is whether the people at Blick personally like the show. A yeah, I think do, really. that's not professional, but I think that's how they're doing that. Yeah, and I think the the enhanced show page, I think that's top priority. Yeah. For Blip. And then probably it's going to be like, does I think when if and when Blip starts calling the enhanced accounts, they're going to be looking for okay, which of these shows follow our standards? Which of these follow? what we demand that they follow. After that, that would probably be... Well, I'm, I don't want to play the guessing game. Especially, you know, there are so many ifs and what ifs. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I hate trying, you know, spreading fear or saying, look, like with the... when we found... when the blip was being sold to Maker Studios, there was a lot of panic. And I pretty much said, we don't know anything. Calm down. If you are right and we are screwed, then I will say, well, I was wrong. You guys were right. But I will not join this fear mongering until then. Yeah. Exactly. What the hell is LC? No, I'm sitting right here. I'm just listening. Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're heading towards the end of our time, time slot. It's been yeah. a great. It's been a great conversation. And if anybody from Blip is listening and wants to come on and tell us what the deal is, oh, the funny thing is, I've been um, literally adding hashtag like at Blip, Blip's official Twitter, for the entire night when I've been pro plugging this segment, hoping that somebody would contact me saying they would give their fucking advice. No. I've seen freaking people add, hey, at blip, to, at blip, uh, my video's audio is bad, uh, I think you screwed up, or something to upload, or your site's down, or something, and within minutes, they freaking reply back. I've been tweeting all night. Mm-hmm. Just hoping that somebody from Blip would actually contact me to fucking defend themselves, and nothing. Yeah. Like I'm a you streamer. Sort of I'm a you streamer and a YouTuber. I don't matter to them. <laughs> I don't matter to the YouTube. I don't matter to the blip because I'm on YouTube and stream. Yet again, another good fucking way they could ever if they could just make a deal with like Justin TV or freaking you stream or live stream and actually let people stream on their freaking show. Dude, it would be such a big money maker for them. It just, it just shows they're not utilizing the fucking resources that are out there at this time. But we shall see what happens with them in the fall Yeah. Time. Yes, but I'm going to have to uh, end this at a call, get to the final little block. So, thank, thank, pa thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Susie. I'm looking forward to our wedding. I know you are. I look I forward to you. I gotta say, this is the best time I ever spent with you guys. Well, on the show, <laughs> I actually felt smart. Well, it was a it was a really good uh, discussion. I think it came off very well. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming on, Patrick, and to Eric as well for coming on before. And just so we can get the show keep going, um, I'm gonna get back to the music, and I'm gonna put a little question mark up. Do you think this person would have been freaking removed from Blip if he uploaded to Blip? This 